Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. You know, towards the end of the course, many students and teachers start to try and predict what essay questions are going to be in the HSC exam. I personally never got into that habit. I prefer to set my students up for any kind of essay. One thing I know for sure, no matter what the question is going to be, is that HSC markers are looking for students who can unpack relationships between economic issues. And that's why I'm making this very important series. I'll be thoroughly unpacking the relationship between different issues, looking at the short-term and long-term impacts that they have on each other. I believe that by making these links easy for you, I'm preparing you for any essay question that the HSC exam can throw at you. Today, I'll be starting with the relationship between unemployment and inflation. This includes concepts such as Nehru, full employment, the short run and long run Phillips curve. To get the most out of this video, you're going to want to know the causes for unemployment and the causes of inflation first. I've got playlists to make that easy for you. Check that out in the description below. In the short run, unemployment and inflation have an inverse relationship, as shown by the short run Phillips curve. This is because the very thing that causes inflation is the same thing that lowers unemployment and vice versa. I'm talking about aggregate demand. For example, when aggregate demand is high, it causes the demand for labor to increase and cyclical unemployment to fall. At the same time, an increase in aggregate demand will lead to demand poor inflation. Another reason for this inverse relationship is because with high demand for labor and low unemployment, workers and unions have greater bargaining power to negotiate for higher wages, and this can lead to cost push inflation. However, in the long run, there's no trade-off between unemployment and inflation. That is, we can try to decrease unemployment and increase inflation, but unemployment will revert back to what's called a natural unemployment rate. It's also known as the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment, or NARU. And this rate of unemployment is often where there's full employment, where there's no cyclical unemployment, only structural and frictional unemployment. This is illustrated by the long run Phillips curve. There are multiple explanations for this. One is that the unemployment rate is not just made up of cyclical unemployment. It also includes structural unemployment and frictional unemployment, which cannot be fixed with a simple increase in aggregate demand. An increase in aggregate demand at full employment will do nothing to lower unemployment, but just cause wages to go up for employed workers, leading to inflation. Another explanation is that with the trade-off in the short-run Phillips curve, lowering unemployment will lead to higher inflation. With higher inflation, workers start to negotiate for higher wages. If there's not a matching increase in productivity, firms would not be able to afford these increased costs and will end up laying off workers. As you can see, we end up back at the natural rate of unemployment, but now with a higher inflation rate and a new short-run Phillips curve. If we keep repeating this process, it does nothing to lower unemployment in the long term, but accelerates inflation instead. What we end up with is a long-run Phillips curve at the Nehru. So it's practically impossible to bring unemployment completely down to zero, because structural and frictional unemployment will always exist due to imperfect matching of skills and jobs, and also imperfect transfer of information. However, if we can train workers with updated skills and increase their productivity, we can lower structural unemployment and shift the Nehru to the left. This process might have contributed to the fact that the estimated Nehru has fallen over time. The Nehru is observed by looking at when unemployment has fallen without a notable increase in inflation. This is one of the arguments in 2019 by RBA Governor Philip Lowe to lower the estimated Nehru to 4 to 4.5%. To sum it up, unemployment and inflation have an inverse relationship in the short run, but not in the long run, especially if we're trying to lower unemployment beyond the Nehru. I hope this video made a complex economic relationship easy for you to understand. If this video has helped you, please leave a like, comment, as well as share the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well as follow us on Facebook to make sure you don't miss any future videos. I look forward to continuing to make HSC economics easy for you. See you next time.